Well, I'm Charlie Bengal, the CEO of Remax Allegiance, and my co-host today is Amy Lassen, an associate broker with Remax Properties in Colorado Springs. Good morning, Amy. Good morning. So, tis the season. Thanksgiving is over. Uh, we're now into December, and it's actually one less week of shopping this year because Thanksgiving was so late. Um, so, we are in the midst of business planning, or we should be, and yep. that is something that we want to discuss uh, today is business planning. Uh, I'm going to be doing my business planning class. I don't have the dates um, offhand, but in the next couple of weeks to uh, our associates at Remax Allegiance. And we're going to be doing some different things this year. So it should be uh, rather exciting. And how we're going to be doing it is going to allow us to do some easy tracking of transactions and measuring as we go through 2020. Yeah. So we'll, um, I'm looking forward to that. But today we, we almost want to simplify things a bit, right? Mm -hmm think in preparation for that, or if you're watching this video in March of 2020, right? There's never a bad time to plan. No. And business planning does not have to be super complex. So I think that's a decent intro um, to where uh, do you want to start? You know, actually, I want to start with a conversation I had yesterday with a mastermind at my brokerage. I noticed that we've, we've been talking about business planning for months. Um, mm -hmm. I started teaching in October. Right. Um, we've been through it quite a number of times. I've given them two different templates. Okay. We have three hour hand holding walkthrough, lots of visioning. They enjoyed it. They were inspired. For the last two weeks in a row, the deadline has been bring your plan. We're going to discuss them in the mastermind, right? And as of yet, they still haven't done it. Now they're busy and they've got kids and I get all that. Sure. I get all that. But I said to them yesterday, is there any chance that you're not inspired to work on this? If something oh, about it, right? You're faced with this task and you say, ooh, done. We'll get it done. Right, and then you show right. up and you didn't do it. Why didn't you do it? Yeah. And I said, and here's what I want you to get. If this document or if this process is not serving you, let's be honest about that. You know, just because Charlie said you need to have a business right, plan. Right. So are you going to use it? Is it going to help you? Why are you not doing this? So here was the recommendation I gave them yesterday. Mm -hmm. Yes, they need to finish it. But I said, here's the thing. <sighs> play with it and play with it and play with it. Touch it. Every single week, I want you to touch your business plan. I don't care. It's five minutes. Pull it out. Look at it. Read it. Yeah. Five minutes a week until you get comfortable and then it can be monthly mm -hmm. but here's what you're going to discover it's either going to inspire action in your business or it's going to inspire revision you'll oh, either discover right, right. you'll either discover that yeah it is a good tool and yeah it does help me or mm -hmm. you know what this thing is useless right and you can fix it the requirement is five minutes a week look at the ding dang thing yeah. my friend elizabeth makes hers on an 11 by 14 piece of paper okay. with a pen this is her business plan yeah she has a stack of them she carries them all with her to group mm -hmm. you know she's got all of her years and she loves that thing because she touches it all the time yep very very intimate to her so that would be my recommendation no matter so, how you create it so what do you tell agents that just don't see the value i don't want to you know i don't want to do the one pager i don't want to go to a class um I'm okay with wishing, waiting, and hoping. I've referred to those agents before, and yep. my mantra has always been, and I was talking to somebody about this oh God, 20 minutes ago, if the agent's happy, I am happy. Right. Right. If the agent right. wants to grow, then let's do it. Sure. So is wishing, waiting, and hoping okay, or should you at least have a one-page plan to map out how that's going to work in 2020? Well, if they do a one-page plan and they never reference it again and they forget that they it's did it. It's kind of a waste, right? Maybe. Although, you know, there are plenty of uh, like motivational trainers that say if you wrote down your affirmations or your wishes or your dreams or your goals yes. and lost the piece of paper, it would be way better than not doing it at all. Right. Agreed. Agreed. And, and you'll, fumble upon, you'll stumble upon it two years from now and go, yeah. oh, I did it! <laughs> well, and, you know, and, and we've talked for some time about the importance of, you know, writing down your goals every day. I've got mm -hmm. clients that'll be like, I read them every day. I'm like, what if you wrote them down every day? Right. Sure. We talk about having them, you know, on your mirror and this and that. Anyway, I don't want to go off on that tangent yeah. completely, but um, something is better than something nothing. Is I better. Think. And I would say touch it, repetition, familiarity, all of it will get yeah. better. You know, yeah. I went from being one of those wish, wait, and hope people to having business planning be one of my favorites. Mm -hmm. I absolutely enjoy it. 
I, I revise my plan throughout the year. I do it for recreation, you know, mm -hmm. with a cup of coffee or a glass of wine. Do it again. It's just fun, you know, because it's almost like, I think it's the way mathematicians feel like magicians. It's okay. Universe with math. I, I, I was never that guy. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> but when you when you learn how easy it is to write mm -hmm. out a few things you're like oh my goodness i have a roadmap yeah Why did right. i not do this before yeah i was more of the social sciences type oh it's me too me too anyway uh okay so where can we start with this i'll call it the i don't want to say the easy plan but it kind of is the easy plan right we're sure. talking about like a one page thing um it's not a class we're not doing a vision no, board today no. right yeah I would be happy to do what I do with coaching clients who are just the clamped, you know, I don't know where to begin. And I yep. say, hey, how about a blank piece of paper? And, and I'll just pull up a blank document and yep. drive and show you how easy this is to do without even a template. Uh, you froze or I froze. There you that are. That works. Let's okay. do it. Okay, cool. Yeah, we were frozen sure. for a moment. Okay. Well, so can we pick um, a nice healthy number that would suit most people and maybe inspire most. And I think often of 200 GCI, depending on your market, sure. is that too high or too low? I think, I think 200 is fine. Okay. So what often people say, I don't know. And one of the things that I love when uh, you and I both heard Tom Perry, I can't remember which event he said, next time start with how much are your business expenses? How much are your personal expenses? Right. What do you need to live? Yep. How much would taxes be on that? Great, there's your number, there's your bare bones number. Um, but I think uh, that also stymies people because they're like, I don't know, I'm not working from a budget, right? right? So yeah. I like to start from a number that will be surprisingly impressive. Like, okay. really, I could make yep. 200 and then yep. show them how to do it. So you and I both know 200,000, you divide it by the average commission that you're gonna earn. Correct. And but in- I was just going to say, let's use 10K to make the math easy. That makes it super easy, right? Yeah. So 10,000. Yeah. So if we divide by 10,000, we can even be really specific because I noticed that when I use shorthand, my clients later say, wait, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. right? Divide by 10,000, which is the average commission, equals 20 sides or 20 right. transactions, right? Yep. And by the way, we're not counting rentals, right? These are buys or Purs listings sold. List, yeah, right. list or purchase, yeah. yeah. So um, we, you and I referenced Tom's math, but I think a lot of coaches and trainers use similar ratios. Mm -hmm. How many people are gonna have to talk to? How much lead generation are you gonna have to do to generate right. closing, right. right? And it's anything from 40 to 50 mm -hmm. conversations about real estate. Probably yep. depends on your skill or your yes, market. Absolutely. So if we want to start high to be conservative, we can mm -hmm. say 50 conversations is going to get you a closing, right? Okay. Yep. So 50 to one ratio. And so let's say 50 times 20 equals a thousand, right? Right. Per year. It seems like a big number, but as we're going to see in a minute, it's really not. Right. I'm going to get conversations. I'm going to put all, in all the long hand so nobody gets to be confused. Maybe we uh, post this document with our video and then it's like you can have the whole thing. So 50 times 20 is 1,000, 1,000 conversations a year. Divide 1,000 by 11 months. Let's be yep. realistic. You're not going to work every possible hour, right? right? So now I actually have to get out my uh, calculator because I didn't do this in advance. But that's cool. You can see I'm doing this live. I did not prep this. This is a blank piece True. of paper. Yes. Divided, oops, by 11 equals, okay, so 90, right? Or 91 if we're rounding up. So sure. 91 mm -hmm. conversations per month divided by four weeks equals 23. Right. What is your conversations per week? Now, what we have to figure out is how you're going to do this. Sources of conversations. Mm -hmm. okay? So sources of conversations, this is your marketing, this is your lead gen, this is all the things that you're going to do to get in front of people so that you can talk about your service. Okay. I think we all know how to track source of business after the fact. 
You know, right. Charlie, if you had sent me a referral last year, I would mark it down. Mm -hmm. One agent to agent referral. That was a right. source. That's different than a marketing pillar. Mm -hmm. Did I focus for 2020 on chasing other agents and making sure that it's a huge pillar in my business that I get a lot of agent to agent referrals? You've got to decide. So there's a difference between tracking your sources of business after the fact, which we all need to do, and making a proactive plan for chasing sources of conversations, right? Got it. So sources of conversation slash marketing pillars. This is intentional. So we all talk about, you know, the strongest four probably that you should be chasing. Everybody's going to have their own. Hopefully, you know, in your mind, if you don't have a good idea of where you're going to be strong, trust me and Charlie, uh, we'll give you a guide. So what would you say is number one, Charlie? Sphere of influence. Sphere of influence. And I love to define it because I'm amazed at how many people push back on that. And they're like, mm -hmm. well, I talked to my past clients. I'm like, well, what about your past high school buddies? Like right. all the humans, all the people who know you, that's sphere. So here's my favorite definition of the sphere of influence. Anyone who, if they bought or sold a house without you, you'd be pissed. That's them. That's Put them a, on your list. That, right? is a, that is a great definition. My definition is anyone that you know that does not have a real estate license. <laughs> um, so <clears throat> different coaches have different definitions, but it's we're so heading funny. to the same outcome. I love and, that. And by the way, um, by tomorrow at the latest, our memory jogger will be uploaded to the allegianceway.com under checklists. So the memory jogger is like a three page document and the idea is it jogs your memory, the name of your dentist, your high school friends, right? Who was on the football team with you, whatever, right? And yeah. the idea is there are people that we should be contacting that we've forgotten in this sheet that again, the allegianceway.com, click on checklists starting tomorrow and it will be there. You can download it and grow your database by going through the memory jogger. Oh, so valuable. You know, and I love it that Charlie, you and I have different definitions because those are memory joggers in and of themselves. Right. So yes, please take full advantage of the Allegiance way and use the memory jogger to grow your database. So what would be another great source of conversations, meaning a very intentional marketing pillar? Past clients, you consider that separate? To me, that's sphere? a subset of sphere. Okay. But we could decide, so here's the thing though, because my friend Elizabeth Putter says, um, current clients is a separate pillar to her. And then I say, okay, define, right? Okay. So I would ask you, how are you treating your past clients different than your sphere of influence that the marketing pillar would be completely different? And if it's not, then I would just say they're a subset of that group, right? <clears throat> if it doesn't right. require a different approach. So I would, there are some people that do client events and just, invet, and just invite past clients or those that have referred them, right? So you get into the sphere, but it's not. So no, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. We can include, so for our purposes today, we're going to include past and current clients under sphere of influence. So it really is that loose definition of everybody that you know, whether they right. bought or sold from you before. Right. Because we haven't defined what your marketing plan is going to be. If right. your marketing plan is only spending time with people who actively refer you, all right, we can work on that in a minute. Mm -hmm. um, I would say you're missing opportunities. You know, in the right. past, some of my best referral sources have been people who never, never bought a house from me. They stayed in their house for 17 years. They're not required sure. to move. This is what I say to my newbies all the time. Your job is not persuade people that it's time to move. Right, right. That is not it, right? It's to be there when they're ready and to have a service model that will be attractive. Sure. So, yeah. Okay, um, cool. So what would give, be another great source? I was just going to say, give me another great source of marketing or conversations. Well, I think some of the basics are like open houses. Mm -hmm. And um, for me, door knocking is involved in that, but that yes. could be separate. So for me door knocking becomes a part of the open house plan because mm -hmm. here's the thing those of those of you listening who are rolling your eyes at open houses um and i've been oh, that gosh. agent please, I, please don't roll your eyes at open houses well but i've been that <laughs> agent i've yeah. put up the signs i've baked the cookies and i've sat there and been bored i've had one person show i've had no people show so here's what i want you to get when i say this is an intention this is a focused marketing pillar. You need to become obsessed with becoming the best at open houses. Mm -hmm. Watch YouTube videos, borrow other people's checklists, come to the class at Remax Allegiant, get good at it, and guarantee yourself a one-to-one -one ratio that you get a closable lead out of every single open house. Don't dabble, 
don't mess around. If it's not going well, get better. Right. Uh, because right. it is a, a legitimate Yeah, I like course. it. Um, <clears throat> so what would be another good one? For sale by owners. Interesting. Which is, you know, that and expireds, I think, are scary to some people. Uh-huh. But, you know, we're... The only thing that's scary to me is dabbling. If, if Ooh, you're going right. to, you know, approach two Fizbos and say it didn't work, that's not an intention. Yep. That's not building a marketing plan around a pillar. Okay. So, so when you say it's going to be a pillar for 2020, what is the minimum expectation of you going all in level 10 before you say, you know what, this clearly isn't for me or it's not working in my market. What's the minimum time? Because I agree with you. Well, you know, I, I called the, those expireds this week and I didn't get anything. You know, mm -hmm. next week I think I'm going to do something else. Mm -hmm. Well, for me, it's a quarter. I was going to say the same thing. Yeah. So okay. I have, I, I have built something I call business by quarters mm -hmm. and I insist that my coaching clients commit to a single source of business for an entire quarter. If at the end of March, they have not crushed their sphere of influence marketing plan, mm -hmm. and it's not running smoothly. They get another quarter because there's no reason to climb over that. Okay. One, right. <clears throat> open right, houses right. could be an extraordinary source, but you've got to grow your skill. So, and I, and yeah. this is what I've said, those of us who have been doing this longer than a couple of years, you know how quickly a year goes by. So if you slowed yourself down and you mastered four in a year, mm -hmm. you might say, but Amy, that's holding me back. No, it isn't. It's getting you ahead. Otherwise right. you're going to dibble and dabble and a year from now, you won't be any better at any of these. So I'd give each one a quarter of dedication. I like that. Yep. Um, Fizbo's another um, one is geographic farming. That's a whole different. Mm -hmm. um, I really ask everybody who says to me they're interested to show me a very detailed marketing plan for that. Yes. Do not start until you've yep. done all the math, the entire budget, build out all the touches. And I think people don't understand. It can be hugely successful. It is uh, costly, and you need to do the math. So and the oh. minimum tryout level ten period for that is what a year. Mind? A year, exactly. A year. But, but, but if you do it for a year and at the end of the year you say it's not working, that doesn't make any sense. That means you didn't mm -hmm. do your preparation. Um, so you need to know what is the turnover rate? What yep. is the average days on market? Who are you competing against? Right. What does your piece look like? Yeah. So, and, you know, and I would argue it's not just the cards. It's getting involved in the community. It's going, if you're in an HOA, it's going to the HOA meetings. It's going to the picnic. If you can sponsor something, it's sponsoring stuff. If they have a newsletter, you're in the newsletter. It's, you know, the postcards are just not adequate enough anymore. And we could spend all day on geo farming. Neither is sending just one out a month, no. right? But the ones, the agents that we know, Mm -hmm. that earn gobs of money from geo farming and what this this one agent in california i can see his face andy c mm -hmm. i think he was gonna earn what was it 10 million in gci okay. and a large chunk of that is from his farm not volume folks gci and yeah his average sales price is over a million dollars but that's still a ton of deals to earn 10 million in GCI. And, and door knocking was a huge part of his farming. He's everywhere. Yeah. Right. And, and, and as you gain market share, he was saying, he was explaining at, at the last meeting we were at that the shopping carts, there's four places to advertise on a shopping cart. He's on all four places. Wow. He doesn't want any competition. Right? Yeah. And he has market share, but his market share is to gain market share in his market. He's in the 20% right? That's you don't great. have to be 80% to have market share. You just have to no. have more than anybody else. Right. And I think sometimes we get confused with that. So anyway, we could do a whole show on geo farming, but well, but I year, think you've a really good example that the, yeah. the part of this plan that has to exist outside this show is you now have to build the marketing plan for each one of these. And I would Absolutely. recommend you choose no more than four. Okay. Yep. We could list 10. I want you to pick four and I want you to do them a quarter at a time. And when I talk about obsession, mm -hmm. No more Netflix. Spend your evenings watching YouTube videos. Other agents give away their ideas, right? right Take right. full advantage of the allegiance way and the resources there. Um, you can become obsessed and really build extraordinary systems by the end of this year. It's 2020 vision, baby. 2020 right. I like it. Cool. Yeah. So another one, one of my favorite pillars <clears throat> is listing leverage. And I have not seen this in anybody else's list, but I feel okay. like we have an opportunity, every single one of us, to create a listing marketing protocol mm -hmm. 
that launches a listing in such an extraordinary way that it not only blows the mind of the seller and benefits the seller, but it makes a splash in your immediate community and guarantees you a closable lead out of every single listing. Nice. Um, so these would be um, most of the ones that occur to me. Everything works. Everything right. works and doing nothing doesn't. So right. come up with your own pillars. But then what you have to do is figure out what is the strategy for each of these? Mm -hmm. How will you implement it? What is the cost and what is the time? And are you going to be able to generate those 23 conversations a week from these sources? Right? Right. right. Then you can do <clears throat> some estimating. You know, you can say, I want 20 closed deals, right? By the end of the year, mm -hmm. where do you expect those to come from? And you can do some estimating. You get what you focus on. Right. 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 So we could say sphere of influence. So one of the first things I ask my clients is how big is your sphere? And I write down a number, right? Mm -hmm. How big is your database? Sometimes it's scary and they'll say, well, 60 people. And I'll say, how long have you lived there? 20 years. It's not 60 people. <laughs> right. you just, it's bigger than that. You just yep. don't realize, right? Yep. The first things first, use the memory jogger, but let's pick a number that's maybe a reasonable average. What would you say, and be really conservative, when you ask this question, what's the number? How big is your sphere of influence? To be really conservative, 150 to 200. I was going to say 150. Okay. Yep. So let's say it's 150 people. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the, the conventional wisdom says that if you do a good job of marketing, and we have a wonderful marketing plan, the Allegiance Way for Sphere of Influence Marketing, if you do a consistent job of marketing to these people, and one more sidebar, agents say to you and me all the time, I don't want to be annoying. And I say, mm -hmm. please don't. Right, right. <laughs> please stop being annoying. <laughs> right. If you right. think you're being annoying, please stop. Yep. So the thing of it is, if you send them a market update every single month, if you call them quarterly and if you invite them to something good once a year and you send them a beautiful bound annual review of their home, that's not annoying. Right. It isn't. So do a good job. Look at your processes, build something beautiful and be consistent with the delivery. And the conventional wisdom is that 150 people will yield you a 10% return, right? right? So that's 15 closings. Yeah, holy we are God, two holy thirds holy of the way God. home. Yeah. So I wouldn't overthink the rest of this then. I might ask you to only pick two others, mm -hmm. right? Because we're right. almost there. Yep. So yep. does that make, I hope that makes sense. Um, the problem is once we, once this uh, show ends and they're on their own, they're left with their own mental demons. Um, you know, you probably need a buddy. You might need to be in group coaching. There are ways to keep you in motion. You know, when you get inspired by a conference or a class, the challenge is you go home to being self-employed or relatively unemployed. I think a lot of us wake up unemployed every day, right? Reinventing our business every day. So I encourage you to seek the support that you need to follow through on something like this. You build out these strategies, you transfer them to your schedule, and then you've got to have somebody hold you accountable probably. What do you think, Charlie? What would you say next steps is when you have something this simple, now what? Oh gosh, so a couple of things really jump out at me. One, you know, I did the math wrong in my head. We are three quarters of the way there just by using a level 10 database, right? I mean, we're right there. Right there. And, you know, if you're getting a lot of listings, your open houses from the listings are probably going to make up the difference, to be honest, right? right? I mean, then you're done. You know, the rest is gravy. So it's time yeah. to up the goal, you know, to I'm be gonna honest. I'm going to delete those. Oh, that's so funny. You're up on the you goal know? and I'm deleting sources. Yeah. Because so, I, I agree with you. What if this was it? Yep. Because right. the thing that's right. wonderful about this is it's much more focused. And I will tell you, focused will take you much further than dabbling. Yep. And we have different ways that have already been uploaded to the allegianceway.com of ways to make it easier to pick up the phone. We've been joking, I think we joked on the last show, that the phone is lighter around the holidays, right? Come February, the phone gets really heavy, right? Because we have this, we have this mental block of, you know, you, I need a reason to call someone. A, you really don't, right? If you make it about them, you're checking up on them. Yeah. But I've been doing this long enough to realize that most agents don't buy that. They just cannot get over that hurdle. Mm -hmm. So using the annual letter to clients that reinforces what you do for them, um, you know, how you're available to them, your specialties, where you work, mm -hmm. um, the fact that whether they're, if they know somebody moving anywhere in the world, if you're with Remax Allegiance, we have 
agents in over 100, what, over 120 countries. Yeah. So, you know, we have referral partners there. So that letter is reminding people, send out a few a week, and then those are some of your conversations for the next week. The annual home checkup that you were just alluding to, Amy, same thing. Send out a few of those a week, mm -hmm. and then that's another conversation, you know, that is already uh, taken care of. So, and then between the sphere and the people that you meet at open houses and stuff and the follow-up, the conversations, um, you know, will probably take care of themselves, to be yeah. honest. Yeah. And that sphere of influence here, and by the way, at least in the DC metro market, $10,000 average commission is very low, right? right? If, if you're, you know, around the beltway, you're looking at an average commission of, you know, closer to 15 at least. So, yeah. you know, the 200K is totally doable. This is not pie in the sky stuff. It's just no. a matter of having a plan. And this is part of a plan here. And then executing on what's that level 10 database look like? What do your open houses look like? Are they mega open houses? Are they a little nicer than what your competition does so people remember you? Mm -hmm. So we need to remember for open houses, we're not just trying to pick up buyers. We're trying to pick up sellers too. Mm -hmm. If you impress the neighbors, the looky lose. Sometimes the looky lose move, and then the um, like your, your, most your, honored, your leverage yeah. plan, right, right. And I think a lot of times it was, you know, when we when you talk to an agent and oh, you did an open house yesterday. Well, how was it? Well, I had a couple of neighbors through. Right. It's always it's always seen as a negative. Right. Well, right. You know, if one of them's ready to list, and suddenly it was an amazing open house. Yeah. Right. Right. So and then and then your 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 listing leverage program. Do you teach a class on that for us or how can I don't, we get our hands I on that? I have to develop it after we should. this four month intensive I've spent on listings. We should yes. develop it. Yeah. Yeah, totally. I'm going to make a note of that. Um, so, I mean, this is, this is not complicated. I hope everybody that's watching realizes that this is, this is totally doable. Yeah. And if your database is not 150, you've got to work a little harder and meet more people and, and, you know, and talk to more people. Those of you, we talked to some agents, Amy, uh, I know you've, you've got clients that are similar to mine where their database is humongous. Sure. They know a thousand people and they're doing sure. 20 deals a year and you're just like, we just need to fix this. <laughs> you know, and then they get on and they're like, well, hey, you know, the Zillow rep called me and I decided to try it out. And it's like, what, you know, what are you doing? And we've used this analogy before of we're all sitting on a pot of gold. Let's mine that gold before we go to another river and pan for gold where gold may not exist. Absolutely. And that is where Amy's point was, focus on one thing before you start to focus on something else. And yes, as you grow your business, if you're a team, as you grow your team, you do need more marketing pillars. Mm -hmm. But if you're not on a level 10 of that database, then I don't think you move on to anything else. You know, you I think start the last... There. Yeah, I agree. And I think the last um, suggestion I want to make to everyone listening is that your service will take you everywhere. And so if you have not codified your service, if you have not systematized your buyer process or refined your listing process, that will take you everywhere. That is the foundation of your conversations. That's the foundation of your referrals. That's the foundation of your marketing. And I would encourage you to up that 20 number to 24 because two a month, has a really nice rhythm. And I will tell you, you have never been a better realtor when you, than when you had four under contract. So quit dabbling, right? Uh, more is not necessarily harder. Uh, if you systematize, you can reach that two, three a month and get your time back because you've now become efficient. So that's what I, I love it. On your I love it. Model. I think that's a great, I think that's a great place to leave it. So we've got one more show this year. Yeah. You can believe it. And uh, so we look forward to seeing you all there. If, as, as usual, if you have a question, you can shoot uh, me an email. And otherwise, please check out theallegianceway.com. There is tons of great content on there. And almost everything we talk about on this show ends up there in the form of a checklist or a business building idea. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. It's right there for you. Hey, you know what? I'm wondering, and this is probably not fair to do to you live, because uh, now you have no choice. <laughs> But with the Allegiance Way Facebook page, I wonder yes. if there'd be a way that people could comment. You know, they can com you can see the show again. It's, it's, yep. it's there. So comment on things that you hope we'll cover in the future, right? So oh, the yeah, oh uh, we would love that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, the Sub Allegiance subjects Way that you all is all see. about yep. making us better, right? The right. Allegiance Way is all about promoting the professionalism in our markets. So please, please comment and tell me and Charlie things you hope we'll cover in the future. 
Absolutely. It makes planning that much easier, to be honest, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, uh, always good to see you. Thanks for your time. I think this was uh, really excellent. Those of you that want a more in-depth plan, join me at my business planning classes. Otherwise, Please let's... Please do. Well, uh, you have to have it. You have, this isn't done. Yep. But, yeah. All right. Good to see you. Take care. Thanks. Bye, everybody.